You got. You should see this mug here. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it. Ooh. Oh wow. no. Forgive me, but wow. Where did that? Where, I hate to be that guy. Oh wow, guys. these are. Is I'm it? probably going to scandalize you, but I'm going to say it anyway. Yeah, it's not your fault, but it's your response. Yo, where did you get that? All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I am your host, Andrew. And tonight, I'm going to ask Cyprian and Father Turbo, aside from this one, what is your guys' favorite podcast? Or what are some ones you listen to, anyway? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I can go first. No, Father, you, right. you there you go. You got it, Father. You know, there, there's one I really enjoy. Um... There's one, it's um, My Life in Christ, and um, it's small excerpts from My Life in Christ by St. John Kronstadt, but the narrator, I love him, and he had this other one, um, Daily Philokalia, and it had this really great, like, doomy electronic music playing in the background mm. while he's like reading the philokalia it's really good i don't know why he stopped it but he stopped that one and picked up this other one my life on my life in christ so it's good little snippets but then they're little snippets so i don't know if it's like a full podcast you know like i really enjoy geopolitics and empire i really mm. i really so you sent me a couple episodes of that yeah i really enjoy yeah. it what about you, Cyprian? Uh, I am. I to be honest, I am not a big like uh, podcast subscriber type. But I will say, like, if someone was to ask me, "Oh, what's your favorite podcast?" I will tell you the podcast that stands out to me. It's not one that I can consume regularly because it's a it it requires a lot uh, of me. It seems, but one that I've come back to many, many, many times over the years for various different episodes is uh, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. Absolutely. His, loves that. Loves that. His five part on World War One. I've listened Incredible. to it probably two or three times, like Incredible. the whole thing. I absolutely Incredible. loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. What about you? Um, well, I drove for a living for a little while. So I got really into podcasts and I don't really listen to them anymore. Um, I'll occasionally pop on like Father, Father Cosmos or uh, usually some excerpts from Father Peter Hears. Um, and then I also really like, uh, I can never remember Father Josiah Trenum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like him. Um, but uh, I got really into podcasts for a while. And there was a D and D one by a set of brothers I really liked. It's called Adventure Zone, and it got pretty bad pretty quick. But it was when it was good, it was really just silly D and D. The reason I play D and D, um, and then they had another one called My Brother and My Brother and Me that was really funny. I would not recommend people listen to it. It's I wouldn't listen to it anymore. Uh, also, Dan Carlin was his hardcore history. I got. By the time I got to it, he had only a lot of his stuff. You had to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So I really listened mainly to the World War One, the blueprints for Armageddon. Um, and I actually had this whole idea and someone can steal this from me if they want, because I'm never going to have time to do it now of doing um, Star Core history, which would be like a Star Wars history podcast in the vein of like Dan Carlin, like doing the Dan Carlin, Dan oh. Carlinisms. So like, he, I don't know if he does the, he says like again and again, like he says that a lot. And like, he emphasizes certain words really hard. 
and um he has a certain way of talking and you know you could tell when he starts getting worked up and he starts talking like mm-hmm. this a lot and then he starts and he does these like impersonations of people if someone wants to do that they can have it congratulations it's yours um but uh there's there's a lot of them that i you know they're not really even worth mentioning but really father cosmos is probably if i'm feeling a talk and i don't really drive that much anymore kind of by reason because i'm i think i've driven enough for one lifetime um that usually father cosmos or youtube shorts of like uh father peter hears or stuff like that so yeah so there you go besides this one this one's obviously the best one out there so obviously yeah i okay honestly honestly do you guys listen to this because i cannot yeah i listen back oh do you yeah absolutely i can't really well i have to i often have to listen back because sometimes father turbo will say something and and you could and i've actually seen myself on video i'm like yep that's when i totally didn't hear anything else that he said because he said something in my mind went Ooh, off like thinking on that topic <laughs> and you can even see my eyes just go Ooh, like oh he's gone he's <laughs> that hit him he's, he's thinking about something but so i have to listen back because then i'll always get something and it, it I, there have been talks that we've had where i've had to listen back like twice to it because that same thing will happen like i'll be like oh okay all right thought about that oh this thing okay now thinking about that and I, then i'm 10 15 minutes in and i'm like thing. i missed everything yeah like i missed everything what's going on so what about you father yeah. do you go back and listen yeah i do um it, it depends you know there's there's times where i'm like i'm not really sure what all happened there you know and uh i'll go back and um to be frank a lot of it is just to make sure that you know kind of like making sure if I need to come back next week and be like, Hey, you know, I was wrong about this or, or this or that, you know, cause I think that's important. Um, mm-hmm. just to try to hold myself to some measure of accountability, but, um, this is going to trip everybody out, but, uh, well, put to you like this, there's this space in which you can step outside yourself and in the right environment, there's a fellowship, there's a communion that begins to happen. And I think it's one of the things that people might say, well, that's kind of the spark of the show is that there's a, a communion that happens between the three of us. And, and I don't, I often find that it's not really me saying something or Cyprian saying something or you saying something. It's rather, there's something to be observed and we're just kind of the vessels and the we are bearing witness to what's being said, you know, and I know that may sound like too creepy for people, but um, that's, that's just kind of like how it works, you know, and so there's lots of times where I go back like, yeah, I think I need to listen because I think there's something there and there is, you know, and, I, and it's almost like I, I'm hearing it for the first time. I know that sounds crazy to some people. Mm-hmm. But. No, do you remember, Father, we talked a long time ago about this, about people saying, I'm going to go make a confession. Mm-hmm. you know what i mean so like making mm. a confession is like a conversation you know it's like you're like making something that's like independent your words are like weaving a tapestry you know and i think that that totally happens sometimes because and i can tell you this the few times i have gone back and listened and it, yeah this is a little i guess this is appropriate because i think we're finishing the creed today to have a little bit of a reflection on what the mm-hmm. first 30 some odd episodes have been like but um I can tell I am a lot cooler under pressure than I thought I am because there are times where I know what I'm thinking and I, I'm like, like my face is completely calm. But like, I'm like when Cyprian dropped off the call like 20 episodes ago or something like that, it was in during the four hour salvation episode and Cyprian dropped <laughs> you mean, off. The- you mean when my, I had an explosion in the back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like, and then like, for some reason like that, father just shut down and i had to like drag everything out of him and like i don't know what happened it it, it must have been something but like i i remember feeling like i was like a pilot just like trying to just like get this <laughs> ship to just like land on the strip but like the wings are gone like like the propeller is not working anymore and i'm just like just trying to just like land it and that's the only thing i care about 
but that goes that goes to this idea of like a spirit of a a thing right like so like the the communion of individuals and then you you it's it's just it's so interesting i mean it's it just cuts across so many i've heard it said in so many ways like miyamoto musashi right like the swords that's right great japanese swordsman you know this book the book of five rings Rings. which is like deep and he just talks over and over about this concept of the spirit of the thing itself he's talking about the spirit of swordsmanship the spirit of art the spirit of whatever and it's just i think that the coming to orthodoxy has helped me to understand that better than i could have ever imagined because i to me it was still metaphor in many ways like in my 20s when i was i was like yeah this is there and then like you know i see this conversation of like egregores and this thing and it's kind of like that still has this sort of metaphorical aspect but when it's like no no there's real spirits that like come ar- come around and we be- that we become vessels for you know when we do the things that we do and it's like yeah. it's the spirit speaking sometimes yeah absolutely you know and that we can break the connection like if we break connection with others or we break connection with certain persons we break communion like we can lose the spirit you know or or something else enters yeah which could be an even worse situation yeah that's why you want to try and talk slowly as best as you can anyway Cause that's like oftentimes when I lose it, when I get caught up, like getting really, really excited. And I'm not talking about mm. like getting a little bit excited, like, no, like getting extremely carried away with something. And maybe like you can feel that you need to move on and you won't, you know, that type of mm. thing. Even um, that carried away, right. Carried that it's, away. Like it's not even, it's not even you, like what's carrying you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like something has grabbed you, lifted you up and it's like moving you. Yeah. It's like mania. But it's like, mm-hmm. I guess that would be the psychological term for it. But we're talking about something different here because it's as like a lack of grace. I talk a lot with people and I can tell when I lose the thread of the conversation. And there are just people inside of me just going like, please, dude, shut up. Just shut up, dude, please. So anyway. So anyway, um, we're going to get back to the creed today um we're gonna try and finish up we'll see what happens um also i'm gonna say this now i was gonna wait but why not next week and the week afterwards i will not be here i think we have a guest host confirmed we'll talk about it off air i think oh nice i think i think wonderful i gotta make sure that it's cool father um that he gives it his blessing um if not i'm sure we'll figure someone else out or not you know, but I think that there'll still be episodes being put up. I am having, well, my wife is having a baby. So I'm out for the next two weeks. So, um, but the, the idea is to keep the show going for the next two weeks. So hopefully we can wrap up the creed tonight. Cause that'll be a nice little, nice little mm-hmm. right there mm-hmm. for Andrew to take a break. So, all right. We are officially at the and one holy Catholic, and I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. Amen. Okay. Right. So one of the things that we talked about a couple episodes ago that we didn't really give a proper explanation for uh, was this idea of perennialism. And I thought maybe we could touch on that for just a second to maybe kick things off. Because, I mean, the resurrection of the dead, that's really cool. And we can come back to that. But I thought I was remiss because I knew during that time, I don't really listen back to the show very often, mainly because I don't, uh, I'm often unhappy with the way I sound. I just like, I'm like, dude, come on, just no, back off, back off. But um we did mention perennialism and I don't think I did my job of asking what that was. So I thought maybe we, we could please perennialism has to do with the kingdom, right? Father. And it's quote unquote, it's establishment on like the earth. Is that what I'm, what it, we're talking about? Quote, quote, what? Excuse me? Like it isn't, maybe I'm getting mixed up and I, maybe I am, but it's that Christ is going to reign on earth for like, no, 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 no. Okay. Uh, that's, um, that's Kiliism, and 
I really should ask what that was then, huh? Because I really don't know. Yeah, perennialism is a ideological ideology philosophy that there is essentially a um, transcendent fundamental truth that runs through all spiritual religious practices. Ooh, way off on that one. That's all right. Yeah. Okay. All right. And if someone wants to get into that, I mean, we could get into it, but um, just I can't recommend it enough. There was a great talk recently with um, um, John Hears from the First Things Foundation, Father Peter Hears, his brother, and Father um, uh, Eustinian uh, Silwano. Silwan. Father Silwan. Justiniano. Justiniano. Thank you. Yes. A little bit of a flip there. They did a great two-parter on it. So there's no point in us touching on it because what they did was just incredible. So if someone wants to know about perennialism, I would I would just go there and, and look that up. It'll be well well worth your time. So okay. So let's then start with because I was way off base on that. Let's start with the resurrection of the dead. And I think maybe that could go a little bit towards Gnosticism. Because yeah. of- and it could go to perennialism too, actually, interestingly enough, because it's one of the it's one of the core things that um, will always distinguish true orthodoxy from everything else. Um, and it's something that the you know perennialists will definitely jettison because it, it's something that doesn't jive with every other system, you know. Okay. Um, and so on that end, for sure. But yes, you know, the Gnosticism and the improper view of the body, improper mm-hmm. view of matter, seeing matter as this, you know, kind of wicked thing. Um, we as Christians, we, we understand that God created, he created, period, and that matter matters. Like that's one of the good puns, right? Matter matters. And that our our bodies in particular are not, you know, we've we've covered this many times. Our bodies are not something that we have. It's it's part of what we are. We are, you know, body and soul. And so when you begin to understand that 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 is the truth, as the fathers have taught it, as the church has has articulated it to um, her children, then when we we break that down in the context of how we're living now in regards of a myriad of different Christian confessions and different ideas of Christianity and uh, Christian worldview and what what does that mean? Um, It it becomes very stark because uh, I mean this not in a, I'm not trying to be uncharitable, but this is one of those areas where it, it gets kind of tough because there's all kinds of great points in which we can try to find commonality with other people, you know, that, that's great. But this portion right here is one where like, it really starts kind of separating the wheat and the chaff. Because a lot of, especially evangelicals, they don't know that they're essentially Gnostics, essentially. You know, they, they have no concept of, of the fact that they, the way that they see the body, that's just my tent and I'm just gonna throw it off and like all those things. It's like, it, it they don't understand that it has a, deep connection and a deep ramification of, of, of practice. So that belief that the body doesn't matter, it plays out in, in the way that they understand worship, to be frank. Okay. You know, it plays out in the way that they understand um, praxis. You know, how, they, how, do they, how do they practice their spirituality? Like, and this is why, um, you know, it's funny, I was talking with someone today, um, just to kind of throw out some juicy, some juicy stuff and, and it and it is gonna scandalize some people, but uh, you know, people pick the wrong points of contention with with religion, with other religions sometimes in orthodoxy. Like the problem isn't the burqa <laughs> in Islam, you know what I mean? The problem isn't the burqa. What's uh, the burqa? Sorry. The burqa is, you know, the kind of long, full he- face, you know, head to toe. Oh, oh, duh. Yeah. I know what that is. Okay, gotcha. Sure. The problem isn't, the problem isn't the burqa. Uh, the problem isn't like a bunch of stuff. You know what I mean? The problem isn't praying five times a day. The problem isn't facing east. You know what I mean? 
Uh, there's a problem praying to Mecca, yes, but facing East Lake, the, the, the problem is denying the Trinity, denying that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God, right? Yeah, a, and what I'm, where I'm going with that is like, this is, or this is, you know, for me, like a key royal path moment because we don't, we're not anti Muslim because we're anti like Eastern or we're anti Far East. And, and some people get, some people bring in their um, America. Yeah, some people bring in their 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 nationalism in a way that that, that becomes really problematic, right? Um, because it, it isn't really about that, you know. Like we absolutely have to be opposed to Islam, absolutely, but for the right reasons. <laughs> you know what I mean? We have to be opposed to, to Islam for the right reasons. Okay, and so th this is this is important. This is one of those things. This is how you begin. One of the one the creed those are all dogmatic points. The creed is 100% dogma, right? So anything that doesn't line up with this, and, and this is the thing, you know, hot button issue, but you know, the, the orthodoxy that the antichrist will embrace will have no problem capitulating and wavering on certain dogmatic points of the creed. So, but this thing right here about the resurrection of the dead, you know, it, we mean it. <laughs> we mean it. That's why, and Cyprian, I saw that you maybe have something, but just one, one second. That's why I bring up the Gnosticism is the resurrection of the dead includes the body as well. Like it will be the body as well. And that's like one of the reasons. Well, yeah, why because the soul doesn't die. Yeah. In that sense. I mean, the soul will taste a spiritual death, but the soul doesn't die in, in that sense. It's the body that needs to be resurrected. It would just be really, really easy to overlook that and be like, yeah, I was coming back from the dead. You know what? I can see that. Like, but it's it's really like, no, like, I mean, literally like the graves will open and people will come back. And like, that's that, like, that's where the Gnosticism and, you know, it's okay. I, my brother was cremated, you know, like, so there's no judgment. Like my step dad my uh he was cremated so you know again you know there's no judgment but that's why we cremate people that's why we're not supposed to cremate people correct i mean because the body is supposed to be coming back so like yes we like yes and this is always a tough one for people because it has more to do with this is one of those things that um the answers are that are often given are not satisfying and in in i i i I'm all for acknowledging those things. I'm, I don't want to act like, oh, just whatever, accept it. Like certain answers are not satisfying. And I think, you know, um, it says in Proverbs, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of kings to uncover a matter. And I think we can sometimes become really lazy and we become, you know, to be frank, arrogant. You know what I mean? And, and I, I don't ever want to be arrogant. I mean, I got enough people accusing me of being arrogant, but that from my perspective comes from people aren't used to encountering truth so if you speak truth the default the default these days are you're either racist or you're arrogant like people have these ways to try to like um you know kind of knock you knock you out at the knees or marginalize you right and so when it when it comes to political things you're racist when it comes to philosophical spiritual things you're arrogant and therefore, since I think you're arrogant because you're holding to some truth, I'm going to discount everything you're saying. Are you following me? Yes. But uh, the reality of it is, is that, you know, there, there are things that are, that are true, right? And we, and we hold to those truths and we don't wield them because we're, we are correct. We wield them in such a way because they're true, right? So um, I, I just kind of like want to put that out there because one of the things that can happen for a lot of us is that um, we lose sight that, you know, just to say to someone, um, yeah, we don't cremate because we honor the body. That's not really, that's not satisfying or sufficient. Why, why do I say that? Right. Because um, what about saints who are burned at the stake? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I was and, just about to bring that up. Or what about saints that have relics of their bones that are spread across yep, yep. continents? Yep. And so, and so what it is, it's all about intention. What is the intention behind there? 
because God will bring everything back by his power, right? But it's the intention. And so the intention, and this has everything to do with, with the mindset, that mindset of that region of that time and, 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 and how that is perceived and understood. Remember that the, that ancient tradition of tending to the body, the incarnated reality that we witness in the way that Jesus' body was tended, this Semitic understanding, this is what we inherit, right? Um, but I would submit to you, there's, other, there's also bigger things at play because the Jewish, the Semitic idea, which becomes the Christian idea, um, this ethos, this, this, the spirituality, it's not created in a vacuum uh, it, and it's, it's, it's not created, it's, it's revealed. That's the first thing, it's revealed. And so that revelation doesn't happen in a vacuum. God understands everything going on. It's not like God's like, oh, I didn't realize that the Vedas are, are, are so ancient. I had no idea, you know what I mean? It, it's getting back to this premillennialism thing. It's like, we have a very weird, naive approach to these things sometimes. And I hate platitudes. And it, it's one of the things I really strive to not do is to give people platitudes. So in regards to this, it's like, I can go deep on this because you know that's when I struggled with this. Like, you know, my dad, you know, uh, was cremated and this is before we came into the church you know and consequently the gap of me being received in the church my dad passes away and then we come into the church we're in the church for a period of time and then my mom passed away so in that period of time between my dad passing away and getting received in the church and my mom passing away you know I, I i had to really work with my mom to be like no please like let us bury you this is the christian thing and it, it could not be sufficient. It let me tell you guys a really great story. So it was an inquirer is like our second, third, whatever inquirers class. And my wife and I, we're kind of like an extended one. And there's usually, it's usually like a year, but I don't know, maybe because we were weird or for whatever reason, it took us a little bit longer to get in there. So I kind of went through an inquirer's class like twice, whatever. Thank God, it's great, you know slow cooking the beans, however you want to look at it. Um, but so I'm in this second round of inquirers classes and the, the day that I invite my mom, right? The day I invite my mom, she comes in, you know, attended liturgy, she liked it, blah, blah, whatever. And we're in class and this is how it always is, right? And just happens to be the day that that father, whatever reason, in Quirus class is talking about, I think it was maybe at this part of the creed, I don't know, but starts talking about like cremation and how we don't cremate, right? Well, we had just buried my dad <laughs> not too long ago. And I just looked over and saw my mom's face just like, uh, sure. just like yeah, we don't cremate and blah, 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 you know? And um, needless to say, I had to really kind of like, I'd have to comfort my mom, but I had to definitely get in it with her and just kind of like help her walk it through. And I was scandalized myself in the sense of like, I knew that that was the case, but just like, I just figured it was something we would never broach. You know what I mean? But like the one class she came to and the one thing that like, I wish wouldn't have got brought up did, right? And so, uh, but it was good because it's forced me to really, this is, I say all that to say, that's why I'm here today say, speaking the way I am in, in that it isn't enough just to say, oh, we just don't cremate because we never have like that. That's not the case, right? And even saying Nikolai Vedermich talks about this in the prologue somewhere, but it's the intention and, and, it's, and it's understanding that in the context of this bigger thing, this is, this is me putting out my two cents commentary, which isn't worth anything. So everyone can go away, get a snack and then come back. But in the light of all the things and, and the pagan practices of the funeral pyre and um, all those things, I'm not saying that that God established in the in the in the Jewish tradition, which which was which we inherited in that sense of understanding of the body. I'm not saying that He did that just as some sort of polemic against the pagans. That's not what I'm saying. 
but I'm also saying that I, I, I feel comfortable. I feel comfortable with the thought that he's also, he was also very aware and that there is a counter intention that he implants in his people as a means of sanctification or being set apart. If you understand what I'm saying, like when you look at the Levitical laws and there's all these spiritual things that are deep behind there, but there's also real practical stuff in regards of, you know, sanitary capabilities at that time, right? But there's, there's also these things that were just simply about them being set apart from the nations. If, if, just if, for the if, sake of being just set for the apart. sake of like th this is this is me marking you setting you apart you know so um i just think there's there's a greater intentionality that it, excuse me i think there's a greater need to put the emphasis on the intentionality of why we don't cremate versus just like telling someone like oh whatever because there's so many people now who like my mom it could really be a stumbling block when it doesn't need to be sure when it, when it doesn't need to be you know i mean my my brother had just been cremated or my brother was cremated shortly after i had found orthodoxy so yeah naturally it was like one of those things that i was like oh boy you know but again i asked my priest about it my baptizing priest and he said ah oh, god does what he wants like god does what he wants i want all of a sudden done like god does what he wants That's so. Right. and so we do our best to honor the traditions of the church and to understand, and, and I'm not saying they are, you know, willy-nilly or capricious. I'm not saying that at all, right? I'm just saying that understanding the real spirit behind the thing and, and also understanding that we need to have a, a, a understanding spirit for our day and age of this, right? I'm not sure. just saying we capitulate. I'm just saying, like, this is one of those things because um, we need to be a witness. We need to bear witness that we, you know, we hold to tradition, but we hold to tradition because it's life-giving, not just out of being stubborn. I'm going to butcher the quote, but I think Dr. Manhattan says at the end of Watchmen, he's like, without condoning, he's like talking with Adrian Veidt about what Veidt did. And he's like, without condoning or endorsing, I see what you did here. Like, it's just kind of like, without really judging you or saying it was a good thing to do, I see what you did here. And, you know, that's, yeah. Cyprian, I'm sorry, we've been. No, it's good. It's good. It, it's good. This, this, I, I think this goes to what I was going to mention. And as I've been thinking about this part of the creed and at, like for a long time, I've been thinking about this part of the creed and like why it's, it's, again with the idea of the creed as an exorcism it seems to me that like this is the the big crescendo of the exorcism because like the rest of the creed is historical dogmatic institutional right when we talk about the church this one is abs it's the first time that it gets personal like beyond like what i believe it's like what i'm going to do now mm -hmm. like it's like because I believe all of these things, now I'm doing this. And, and it's oh. like a, like I'm actually doing this thing. And it's not even like I promised to do it. It's like I'm doing it now. It's like grabbed your head and made you like, look, so now I'm right. And it's, the resurrection. Well, it's, like, it's, it's almost to say like, I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come because I believe all of these things. Yeah. Right, that it's like mm. if you believe all of these things, then you will necessarily look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Right, and so it's like th it's the one where I feel, and I totally get this idea that like you have to be able to. It's 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 not just enough to say it. Like you have to say that one, and it has to be true. But you will know if it's true by their fruits. Mm. Like you will know if I really believe that by how I react to a discussion about a family member who's going to be cremated, mm -hmm. right? Like you will know if I'm actually, if, if this, if, if when I said that, if that's actually true or not, right? right? By, by the fruits of my actions. And it's, it's, I had thought about that for, so. I mean, I've been thinking about that for a year, right? As I've been saying this thing, you know, multiple times a day, 
And it's like, I've been thinking about that. And it's like, well, what does it's so it's so simple. No, so simple. Sorry. <laughs> no, it is it, 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 it this one is not simple though. No. Like that's the thing. Like this one is far from simple because it also in it also indicates that because it's fantastical, isn't it? Like from the standpoint of someone who's of a secular mindset, mm -hmm. like it's the fantastical one. So like, it's the reason why I could see that Protestants would have a problem with it because up until that point, everybody, everything can be pushed off as a metaphor. Mm -hmm. Like up until that point, every single part of the creed, I can justify and rationalize and do all these things that it's a metaphor until I hit that one. Yeah, you know what? And it's real. You know, it's funny, Cyprian, there's, there's this um, clip or those like YouTube short clips that I saw actually preached on it like a little bit a couple weeks ago um, with Sam Harris and, uh, and uh, Dr. Peterson in one of their debates. And the clip there, man, I almost wish we could pull it up because- I'll pull um, it up. What's it, what's it called? I'll pull it up. You, it's like, I don't know. It's like, uh, he gets at him. He's like, so you're telling me you believe in the judge of the living and the dead, the resurrection, the dead, this is the God that you believe in. And it's, it's wild because in that clip, in that context, or maybe I should say maybe out of the bigger context, it's like he's got um, Dr. Peterson on the ropes and he's just kind of like vacillating because he's trying to pin him down. And this is the mm. thing that we've been talking about with Dr. Peterson. He's trying to pin him down. I'm like, yeah, you I don't think I, I think I have it, Father. I think I have it. Is it uh, Sam Harris asked Jordan Peterson a tough question about his belief in God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let yeah, me see, yeah. Let me see if this is, let me yeah, see yeah, yeah. Uh, if this is it. Let me see. Okay, this might be it. Okay, yeah, let's, let me, let me, uh, because, yeah, thank you, Father, because this gets to exactly what I'm talking about. Like, this is, I, I think, you can tell me if this is it. Let me pull it up. Okay, here we go. Uh, wait a minute. Did I lose you guys? You there? No, you're good. Is Father being stoic or did he freeze? I think I was reading a text. Oh, he's <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's stoic. Okay, here we go. Uh, let me let me see if I can grab this here. All right, Father, I'll, I'll play it and tell me if tell me if this is it. Uh, here we go. Tell me if the audio is okay too. You say you believe in God. You have been. No, I say I act as if he exists. You say what? I say I act as if he exists, okay, so, which is a much more precise claim. Okay, so so then what, what but in this case, what, that you, so you act as though God exists. Yep. And in addition, I've heard you say that I act as though God exists, that I'm, I can't really well, be so an atheist. Far, so far, it seems yeah, that. Right, yeah. <laughs> we'll the, see. The, the night is young. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 so in that sense, I'm not really an atheist. I've, I've heard you say this. So that it, 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 well, some of you is. Well, in, if I were really an atheist, I would be far more poorly behaved than in fact I am, right? I would be like Raskolnikov committing murders and, and assuming there was nothing it wrong with more, it. Right? It would be more likely, yes. Yeah, okay, so. so Wait, that's a big distinction. I need, would yeah, I need to know. Be more likely. What was that? It's a big distinction that you would is very different than it would be more likely. Taking the safety off the gun is not the same thing as shooting it, right? Yeah. So the temptations laid open to Raskolnikov would be more at hand. Okay. Just as they were to him. So what in that, so in, in what sense do you mean, what, what is the God that you act as though he, she, it exists? And what is the, what, what is the God-shaped thing I must have in my life to prevent me from being a, quote, real atheist? Well, okay, first of all, I have to point out that there's no possible way I can answer both those questions in two minutes. Well, it's the, it's, it's the same question. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, what, is, okay. it, like, what, what do you mean by God? Okay, well, I'm going to tell you some of the things that I mean by God. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh, we, we do have to get the questions. Maybe we're going to do this tomorrow. Yeah, maybe this is where right. we, we start. Oh, God. Is this it, Father, by the way? Is this uh, the clip or, or no? I can't. Well, because what I saw is even like an even shorter clip, and I think yeah. this is the one because there's a part where he actually starts like reciting like 
aspects of the creed like sam harris is like you're telling you believe in like the jesus is going to be like the judge of the living and the dead and all that and he he's like oh you know it, it, he's he starts to kind of stammer and 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 vacillate on it um well i mean even the fact that he says i i act as though i, I act as though yeah. that right there yeah but that's the do you do you want me to go forward i can see if i can find it yeah let's we can try yeah okay let's okay let me see. let me see i'll i'll like so just so everybody knows i'm gonna try to like bop through it if people are just listening to it, I'm going to like try to bop through it and see if I could find that point. Because I think I do recall this clip too. I think I've seen this. So let me see. Well, that was a pretty... I already made one point. Because Peterson's just going to so be mealy mouth about it. Of real yeah, because it's Harris portrait. saying to him. God is what calls and what responds in the eternal call to Now he's just reading something. So you don't manner you up the answer. hierarchy, so to speak. The question Gee, is, is the fundamental care if anyone masturbated. Here we go. So I, I, I was not hearing in that list of attributes a God who could care if anyone masturbated. Uh, I was not hearing a God who... Depends on what else is stopping you from doing, Sam. Uh, well, I, I'm sorry, I, I missed that. Wait, 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 I said wait. it depends on what else it's stopping you from doing. Well, yeah, okay, so it's, it's yeah, important to live. But seriously. It's, it's important to do something other than masturbate. Yes. Uh, Yes, which is, which, which actually constitutes a problem yeah, is, for many which, people. Which is harder than it sounds. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not hearing a, 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 a God, a personal God, who can possibly hear anyone's prayers, much less answer them, right? And um, so I'm just, I'm wondering what percentage of religious people who, who would say, oh yeah, I believe in God and it's the most important thing in my life, uh, what percentage of those religious people do you think have in mind a God of the sort you just described? I don't know. Oops, sorry. No, Sam, it's a good question because when I go talk to people, when I, when I talk to people online and use exactly this terminology, millions of people listen. So it's not so yeah. obvious well, which, what percentage of no, people see it this way. It's, it may be that they have the intuitions, but they haven't been articulated well. I mean, this is, this is the problem. Can I, uh, you guys don't mind if I pause it right there? Like, no, please. That... Catching that right there was, I don't think I caught that the first time I heard this. Like the intention behind what he said is like, no, when I talk about, when I, the God that I'm presenting, millions of people listen, who cares about any other type of God? People, millions of people want to hear the God that I'm talking about. And I think Harris is trying to ask him something completely different, which is like legitimate. Mm -hmm. It's a very well, weird well, well, the thing is, is what, and this is part of the, I mean, I don't know, we're trying to get out of the creed, but like, from my perspective, right, what Jordan Peterson is doing, and it has some value, right? It has some value, but what he's really essentially trying to do is to give a Jesus that's palatable for the world. He's, he's trying to, not even, he's not, he's not trying to really give Christ, he's trying to give a God. He's trying to give a God that is palatable for the world, a God that makes sense, one that's sophisticated, one that you can wrap your mind around, one that you can use to better yourself as a human being. Isn't that Satan, though? Do I think it's Satan? No, isn't, wouldn't that, <laughs> yes, wouldn't, that wouldn't that necessarily be Satan? Yeah, like just... if, if, if what I was intending was a God that the world will accept. Yeah. Like a God, the God of this world. That yeah, isn't I that what I, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say Satan. I'd say Lucifer. Lucifer. Okay. And, and like, okay. yeah, let's, you know, the devil's in the details, right? Pun intended. So yeah, can we break that? Can we break down the difference between those two? Yeah. Well, Satan, Satan is the accuser adversary, okay. which, which, you know, Lucifer is that, but that's not what, Jordan Peterson is is presenting, um, because and here's the thing: people, people lay off on Jordan, leave him alone. He's one of us. Well, he's not going to defend all that stuff. He's not, you know, like if you're quote unquote a Christian, quote unquote orthodox, and and you're going to deny, you're going to say, well, God doesn't really answer personal prayer either. Blah blah. blah. It's like whoa, 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 like. 
what camp are you in? You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, and so the, the thing is, is that what, what I've seen of this debate and these things and just what I've seen in general, and again, there's value, right, um, in what he's presenting, but just people aren't careful anymore with it because what he's presenting is something that Lucifer, um, this, um, you know, Prometheus, right? Prometheus, right? The, the one who brings us fire. The one who, the light bringer, the, the one who wants to, to, the one who wants to bring true illumination and fraternity and, and, and rationality and all these things, right? This is, this is what's being presented because I'm going to tell you something, a God who can hear your, your prayers and, and, and is personal and, and, all you know and and tells you to turn the other cheek and and tells you to be humble and and you know all the critiques of Nietzsche all the critiques of of all of them all the all the voices marks all the voices and the pointing fingers against against Christ Peterson throws his lot in with them too and but he just says 100 percent he just says like yeah, but that God, you know, he's dead and good he's dead because this is the real God. This is the God that I'm raising up. And, um, you know, there's a problem, Houston. And and the reality is, is, you know, and again, forgive us, you know, maybe we'll start doing better with pre-production. I don't know. But like, if I had that clip, it just came to me, honestly, just came to me. But that clip, I mean, with <laughs> St. The Alpha Help Us, it, it's really telling because he he's getting into the creed in particular. And, and this is kind of my point is the creed isn't just a kind of, you know, um, ransom note, kind of dogmatic ransom note thing put together, like, you know, uh, cut and paste and thrown it together. There's power in it because it, it, it's laying out a spiritual truth. It's, and it's laying it out in a way that not only we can, you know, kind of internalize and assimilate it, but the, the spirits respond to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's powerful. It's powerful. And it, and it, and it really separates the wheat from the chaff. It, it there's really something separates. so, there's something so interesting. Forgive me, Father. There's something so interesting about that. This just hit me because, you know, I hadn't watched the Peterson Harris debate since coming to orthodoxy. Right. right? So like that was, it, it's so, it's so crazy to see that again and it, I'm watching something that's a completely new like I'm watching something completely different after mm -hmm. understanding and it's so interesting because I do remember watching it the first time and even you hear all the young men in the audience cheering for Jordan Peterson right like as he takes on and him saying and it's so interesting watching Harris because Harris actually has him he's got his number and Harris is like you're telling me that I believe in God like mm -hmm. that you or that you act like you believe in God and you're telling me that I do the same. But actually, as I watch it now, it's like, no, actually, Jordan Peterson, you're an atheist. Mm -hmm. And so is Sam Harris. Mm -hmm. But you're just adding all this stuff mm -hmm. where you're like you've made up a God that's not God. But you because you don't actually believe in God. Well, actually, I would even let's just have some fun. Let's play some volleyball with and I'll I'll volley back to you. I'd say, actually, please. We're the atheists. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. In the in 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 the time of the of the empire, and the first, oh, I see where in you're the going. early years, what were we we were accused of atheism, right? Because we didn't believe in the pagan. That's God. right. That's right. Yeah, we're right. the atheists. Exactly. They are the true believers. What what Jordan's presenting, Jordan Peterson presenting, he's presenting basically like something that can hitch right up to to uh, ancient roman cosmology no problem neo-paganism no problem no problem we well, are and the, the sons of peterson are hitching it to that because if you yeah. look at their if you look at their aesthetic and you look at their iconography it's all old roman statues roman gods like they they're going straight back to it yeah we're we are we're the atheists you know, in, in, in the new um, Thor movie, 
Russell Crowe plays Zeus, and he was originally cast to play Satan. So there's something there. In the Thor in the Thor movie? Yeah. He was originally Satan was state Russell Crowe was gonna be Satan in the Russell Thor movie, Crow and then they changed apparently... him to be Zeus. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, wait, is Satan there. in the new Thor movie? I haven't watched it because everybody says it's terrible. It's not very good, but I mean, it's okay. But is uh, Satan is is Satan a character in the Thor movie? And Satan's not so, even a character in the Marvel universe. Like he's Mephisto. Mephisto is Mephisto, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's like a Satan-like figure. There, like DC is pretty clear that God and the devil exist in the DC universe. Marvel does not take that stance. Marvel is like there's a pantheon of different types of gods and Mephisto, you know, they're all kind of aliens, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, uh, uh, but right, yeah, I mean, Russell Crowe's originally, supposedly, according to the news, he was going to cast us to play Satan. And then at the last second, and it's interesting because I was, when I was watching that movie, they're in this great big pantheon and there's all these different gods. And, you know, I was like, I kind of thought to myself, I was like, you know, I guess the demonic like councils could look like that as well. Like they could look like a giant golden palace. Like I've always pictured like why wouldn't they? Yeah. I mean, I've always pictured it's caves, it's it's the underworld, you know, blah, blah, blah. But that for the first time it struck me. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Like this could be they could be hanging out in like some really dope places, like all sitting around talking about how to, you know, come out on top of this whole thing or whatever. But um, you know, and you know. I don't know. It's just a, so, it was yeah. a that kind of. I, I I just I just find the thing interesting because these points like resurrection of the dead really like you were saying earlier like it's so fantastical, mm -hmm. you know. And it's it's the point we got on this little rabbit trail was because in the clip we had found it, Sam Harris goes directly for that resurrection of the dead, judge of the living and the dead. Like you don't really like this is the god that you would ever and and Jordan can't. What was his answer? He, like, did he just kind of sputter on through it? He kind of sputters off and redirects. And as I remember it, you know, um, he doesn't affirm it. He doesn't go go in on it. He doesn't defend it, you know. So um, it's just important because this is one of those things that people might be tempted to just, you know, because that, that new and improved palatable orthodoxy, this, you know, if there was ever something they're going to try to chop out of the creed, this is one of them, you know, kind of like, ah. You know, you know people have asked me about this, Father. Like, mm -hmm. they've, they've played that Sam Harris to people who I've known for a long time, mm -hmm. right? I've been like, because they're real curious, right? They're mm -hmm. like, mm, of all the people, mm -hmm. right? Now, oh, now you're Orthodox? Like, wait, and you believe, and they will do the Sam Harris thing. You believe this, 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 and this? And I'm like, yes, I believe. Mm -hmm. yes i yes i do believe and and they're like why did you how does that flip because they're like if i asked you this three years ago you would have said no i would have probably given them a jordan peterson-esque answer and the interesting thing about it is that since coming in contact with orthodoxy a a, a, a crazy number of things that have happened that are i've lived long enough right i'm a grown man so mm -hmm. it's like i've lived a life like in a short period of time, a whole bunch of things have happened that I otherwise would have thought fantastical because they were so low in probability. Mm -hmm. And yet they stack up and they're all related to the church. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm like, Whoa. what <laughs> happened was my mind flipped. Like I had a, I had to have a complete reset of what the possible is in the world that I live in. And that shook my reality mm -hmm. and, and that flip of what the possible is and then how it manif how it's manifesting in my own life and my own like health, mentally, spiritually, physically, all of these things and the health of my relationships. I'm like, yeah, the, the dead can ride the, the dead can be right. If, if he can do that, raising the dead is nothing. Yeah. I was talking with a couple of brothers from the church and one of the things that they talked about was venerating the relics of St. John of San Francisco. And there's being this moment of being like, all right, here we are. We're going to kiss this, uh, you know, this corpse, you know, we're going to kiss this, these relics of this holy, holy man. And like, we're going to go ahead and do it. And like, it's this like, this is a real moment of 
like it's a testing moment you know it's a moment of faith of just having to be like everything my animal lizard brain is saying avoid the corpse there's diseases avoid the corpse there's diseases don't go near it you know but then like that that rationality you know kind of floats away and then it's just like no this is this is i mean they have to change this guy's shoes because the shoes the bottom of his shoes get worn out like that saint john of san francisco is still obviously very much alive like you know, and there, there's stories I've heard, numerous stories of interacting with his relics and there's still life there. You know, like it, it, it's not, it's you're, and you're not kissing some like skeleton, you know, you're, you know, you're kissing incorrupt remains of like, of, of, a, of a saint, of a holy, holy man. And, and, you know, that moment of, of kissing this, you know, these relics, you know, like, like where else are you gonna like what what other religion are you gonna find that at? like i don't know it, it yeah, to well, me it's just it's interesting because it, it brings me to a point of of maybe even like the connecting point of you know the life of the age to come because we don't just kind of like cross our fingers and hold our breath and hope um there's a weird thing that happens right when you cross over when you everyone has their different catalyst or threshold. For those brothers, it was venerating, you know, the relics of St. John. For, for, for me, it was seeing the, um, the uh, Sitka icon of the mother of God. Um, everyone has their thing. Um, was that a myrrh bearing icon? Um, it was a miracle working icon um it wasn't streaming more as a miracle working icon but it was my first time seeing a miracle working icon it was tough it was tough and um and even just kind of like having this you know these thoughts and kind of wrestling with these thoughts and it's like are you really gonna do this this is you know all these things it's like once you do this you're crossing a line with blood it's like those 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 temptations those thoughts are real but, but the thing i'm trying to get at is this is part of the way that it works, your initiation into the kingdom. Because what I mean by initiation, I don't just mean like a rite of passage or a, a ritual that you, that you have to um, be initiated through, but I mean a, 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 a real paradigm shift has to occur in which you are able now to see, like kind of Cyprian is alluding to, you see things with a whole new, whole new set of eyes, and you can't unsee it anymore. And and that shift begins to happen, and then you begin to see like, oh, yeah, I don't even, I, you know, like Saint Nikolai says, I don't believe, I don't believe in God. I know. That that shift begins to happen, and you know, just my own kind of like, you know, priest moment. If you haven't had that moment, you need to, <laughs> you know, you need to have that moment where you really finally kind of cross over and, and, and cause it's in that moment of crossing over. That's when you no longer really have to ask the questions about like the saints and things like that in that way, because you're like, yeah, they're, they are real. And it, and it almost becomes terrifying, right? Because you begin to encounter real holiness. You begin to realize, oh, this isn't necessarily talking about like holiness as in something, you know, fluffy clouds and harps. This sure. is other, this is something, you know, capital O, other. This is something uh, not me. <laughs> this is something not of this world. This is something beyond. And, and, and that experience then begins to color the way that you interact with food and with people, you know what I'm saying? And then that's where, like what St. Simeon, the new theologian talks about and others about, you know, if you don't have that taste of the kingdom of God now, like it's, it's, it is, it is worrisome thing for you because the kingdom of God, the, the eschaton, which all this portion of it is eschatological, which is what Cyprian was also getting at. This portion is eschatological. And those are the things that are in the future. Yes, but we taste of them now. Not in a metaphorical sense, not in some kind of poetic sense. In a literal sense, you begin to taste of them now. And that's where you start moving into these things where miracles start happening. 
and miracles become a thing where it's like you don't you don't you don't lose your mind as much anymore because you're like well of course there's myrrh coming out of that icon sure of course we anointed that pregnant lady and the baby's fine of course we, you know what i mean like whatever the miracles are that happen we begin to be like of course the problem is we realize the issue is us we're, we're the glitch in the matrix, our, our, if you will, our doubt, that's the real glitch. It's like, oh, it's almost like when you have those moments of doubt, it's almost like you can, if you, your eyes are open, you saw all the saints and angels, like in the spirit kind of turning and being like, you know, you're kind of like, like you, you become all glitchy. It's like, who's this guy? You know, like, because that, that, <laughs> that, that doubt, it, it pulls you out of, it, it pulls you out of it and, it, and it, and it, and it, we begin to see that we're the ones who are not solid. We begin to see the ones that we're the ones who are hollow. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if you want to know what it looks like, and we'll give them a break after this, but if you want to know what it looks like when someone is about to approach that and shirks away, that's Mr. Peterson. Mr. Peterson well, was, he's, but he said it, he said that happened to him. Yeah. Like he said it literally happened to him, like not in a metaphorical sense. Uh, he, he said it on Duncan Trussell's he, a long time ago on Duncan Trussell's podcast, where he said that he had an experience where the heavens opened up and something descended and was like, OK, let's do this. And he was like, no. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yeah. I've oh, yeah. Seen oh, I, oh, I've, oh, I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull it up <laughs> and see if I could find it, because it is. When I saw that, I was like, okay, Peterson, Trussell, uh, let's see, uh, experience maybe? Boy, if he ever finds out about this podcast, he's going to get real pissed at us. I'm just going to say. Jordan Peterson? No, yeah. No. No, I don't think so. Let's I think we're I way it. below his radar. Uh, oh, I can't, I can't find the clip, but I, I mean, I can give you the, I can give you the, the synopsis because it's really short he says that you know his his symbol his his little symbol that he uses that's his mm -hmm. like his yeah. logo on everything it comes together in his videos and everything so that symbol is a statue that he made that is supposed to be the image of music so when he was in like grad school or something he was making this symbol that's supposed to be the image of music and he said when he was making that something happened like he had a, a thing a spiritual experience like a basically like a road to damascus type of moment hmm. he's making it he's thinking about it he's got music going in the background and all of a sudden he was struck like knocked back into his chair and he said like the heavens opened but the way he described it is like absolutely the heavens open like he's like not like hallucinatory but he's like very real very much in my mind's eye and he said something came down and was like beckoning me to it and like very much saying you have the opportunity to like come and that he actively said no i don't want it no and the thing was like he said it was kind of like dejected and it was like he said the feeling that he got was disappointment hmm. and that it like reascended covered up and then he was just like in shock his wife came in later and was like what are you doing you've just been sitting here like what's going on and he said and this was the moment that he said completely sober he said whatever it was and it's the only time i've ever heard him mention it wow was this one kind of obscure podcast that he did wow. but in my mind that's like a denial right wow like he denied he denied it and like I've thought since I heard that, that this is the result. This is what you get when you deny. I was talking about the, the, the pill addiction and, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, I think that, I think it's related to it. Sure. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I someone's trying to I get him to repent. I think it's related to it. Well, the, the, this, I, the, I had never, I had never really, now it's, now it's even worse, right? Like now it's even worse that when, when I see what Jordan Peterson is, is a, he's a representation of something. Well, right? and like I, I hate to harp on it. Right? Sure. I'm not trying to harp on him, but it's more about the concept, and and that it really is like I think when Sam Harris said, "Do you believe in a God that can answer personal that hears and can answer personal prayer?" 
if you can't say yes, you don't believe in God. Right. You yeah. certainly aren't. You certainly aren't orthodox. Right. In any way. You're, you're larping and, and, the Jedi. But but my question is, you know, like when I was around evangelicals, when I was around Episcopals, I'm not trying to judge anybody's heart or anything, but my general feeling was not that they actually believed that God was going to, that if they prayed, that God was going to answer their personal prayers. Yeah. Not that they actually believed it. Yeah. And they, and it's funny because they want to actually say it quite yet, but, and again, I just want to say for the record, I, I just sent a podcast Jordan Pearson did to someone with this. So I just, I'm just trying to be even balanced in that sense of like, you know, I appreciate his stuff, blah, blah, blah. But like, this is important because I, I, I just, I, I got to say this, right? Because one of the things that we have to be really aware of is that although so many of these people, I'll, I'll say it, you know, there's exceptions always. But generally speaking, when we look at Methodists, Episcopals, like, they're just looking for the opportunity to start backing out on some of this stuff. I'm sure there's exceptions. I'm sure there's really well-intentioned, you know, Episcopals and, and Methodists who like would say like, man, I wish I could be Orthodox, but I'm just scared of losing my money. God bless you. Like, you know what I mean? I, I'm sure they exist. I'm, I'm big serious, right? But like the Methodist church by my house that has the transgender flag thing and just like all that stuff there, you know what I mean? And the, they're materialists in, 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 in the worst kind of sense because they're still trying to have this, these religious trappings. And Jordan Peterson's making a way for them to back out. If, if you That's understand right. what I'm saying. I do. He's making a way for all these people to back out and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm religious, I'm Christian or whatever, I believe in God and cut out all those things which really are our are, are obligation. Our obligation isn't showing up on isn't showing up on Sunday. Because people show up on Sunday and don't fulfill their obligation. Your obligation is to show up on Sunday, if you understand the difference I'm saying. Your obligation is to pray. And and your obligation is is to pray with the belief that God hears you. This is the book of James. Do not be a double-minded man right? Unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is one who prays and thinks that God won't answer. That's, that's, that's being double-minded. And this is one of those things where, why, why I will say to a young man, to say to someone, you know what? You want a, a good prayer rule? You know, I just said it to a young man today. A good prayer rule, if you're a young man, you're out in the world, whatever, say the creed every day. If you're on your, if, no judgment, fine. You're on your phone every day, you're consuming Joe Rogan. You're spending more time in Joe Rogan than you are the fathers in the scriptures. You're, you're on your phone scrolling Facebook, Instagram. You're doing whatever. Okay, great. You know what? You better be seeing the crate. You better be saying the creed every single day, at least once a day. Because when I tell you it's an exorcism, it's going to be one of the only things that's going to fight off that slow eroding you're doing to your soul by just allowing all of these viewpoints to kind of come in and they're all antichrist and they're all remember not necessarily against but getting in the place of and being like yeah this is great whatever and they're eroding the very thing that is allowing you you know when you have a door this is my house i have an old house and like keys stop working because they're getting worn down the mech like it's wearing down your keys. Yes, yes. It's going to get a lot harder to get in the door. And that's why these these why these 20 year olds, whatever, it's part of it. I get it. I got one. But these 20 year olds, like, they have a hard time because number one, they're not using the key ever. And if they do, it's so gummed up from lack of use. It's like, you know, the key breaks, but it's like all of these influences what do you have left to fight it to fight back against it and and the creed does it because it, it's this is the truth this is what i believe and it and it's important because there's all kinds of christians who are going to start saying yeah that's that's old fashioned or yeah that's like what is that that doesn't you know what i mean that's 
that's not God. What, you, yeah. you understand what I'm saying? That's not palatable. They would never, they don't say it that way, but you know, that's, it's not, yeah. it's not the world system. Yeah. You know what, what flipped again, it's this like incarnational experiential difference. Like what a big, a big flip or a big revelation or eye opening or whatever you want to call it. Um, was beginning to pray the commemoration for the living and the dead on a regular basis. And there was a point, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe I've been doing it for two weeks. Maybe I've been doing it for a month, right? Where I realized what's hap- what was happening in there that was so, that I was like, oh, this is what prayer is. Like to father, to your point about your job is your job is to show up on Sunday. And like, your job is to be in prayer where I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, I'm requesting salvation through the prayers of all of the Orthodox in the world, living and dead, while at the same time, I pray for them. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just got this Mm -hmm. vision. There was one point there where I just got this vision. I guess it's the vision of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. where it was like you know as a network as someone who builds networks and everything where i just saw like the prayers of the saints Mm -hmm. the deceased everybody like moving through everyone and it's like your job is so important Mm -hmm. right like to to to, like to move the spirit through everyone and i I was just like Forgive me for you're, that's it. That's it. That's what I, saw. I didn't want to say it. But yeah, you're a node. You're a node. I mean, I was I was explaining this in like one of the last I don't know, it was a catechism class or it might have been the, the class it was, on the logo. Yeah, like catechism. like you're a node, and this is this is why, like, you know, it's your job to keep your uh, keep your that's terminal true. clean. You know what I mean? Make sure that there isn't the the kind of build up and the rest, all those things that would keep you from being less conductive. You know what I mean? It's but it's, that's real. No, I think, no, other, I think no. that's that's the, the the thing that blew me away was I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, like, and I think it should give anybody like pause to be like, okay, wait a second. Here's this tradition that's thousands of years old, where people are. If this wasn't real, this would not have stuck around for two thousand years. No, like n- no. nobody does this just to like fit in with somebody or to virtue signal because it's a private activity that you're doing <laughs> there's no one else around when you're doing this yeah and, and and i think and i think too this is where you know i'm 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 more than happy i'm more than glad to be wrong on this you know what i mean i, I hope that 30 years down the line i can be like yeah I guess I was being a little zealous back then. You know, I, I hope that's the case. But man, it's later than people think, man. Because you know, the 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 gates of hell would not prevail against her church, against 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 the church, against his church. But like, man, when I see what people are up against, and I see the way that people's faith are, is you know, being attacked and whittled down. It's like, man, you know, I guess you can always say it's always been tough, but it's like, I don't know, because the the foundations are really starting to be shaken. Like we're like the like 2020, <laughs> what, what happened in the churches in 2020 never happened before. The foundations are being shaken. And um we got to really understand that, which is, I, for me, it was one of those moments where I had already been using the creed as my foundation of catechism, but if there was ever a doubt to do anything else, I was like, nope, like, uh, until I'm done as a priest or whatever, you know, I'm dead or whatever, like, as long as I'm catechizing people, this is, this is the foundation I'm giving them because the power of what this is and the way that it ends, the way that the creed ends, I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. Like, let it be. That life of the world to come and everything like you said that proceeded before it, we're living in a time right now where it's never been challenged before the way that it is from my perspective, but also what, how exhilarating is that? Because now, 
we're living in a time where we, we, we have to dig in and get after this and really try to touch it, really try to live it out. Because it's, if you aren't, if you aren't really striving to, to really experience the fathers in the tradition and really live this out, you're not going to make it. There, there, there's too much that wants to come in and just say like, you know, there's too, jo <laughs> Jordan Peterson is so good. That's the problem. And I, and he means well, right? That's, that's. Does he still, do you think he does still? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know, but, but I, but I know that, I know that, you know, when he did that message to the churches and he's saying like, I mean, I, I get it. And you'd, so many priests were, I'm sure if they saw their attempt, it was like, yeah, that's, that's what I want. I want to, you know, I see these 20 year olds just like struggling. My son's one of them. And it, and it pulls on your strings in that right way. But there's always this thing in the back of my mind where I'm like, it's Christ's church. You know what I mean? It's Christ's church and it's not, it's not a good, moral, strong, uh, you know, it's not a clean shave, you know, and, and, a, and a good moral pep talk that, that saves people. Yeah. You know, I, you know what I'm saying? As a person who did then kind of like during my early time in the church, kind of like approach the holy and then shirk the responsibility you know, like there's a, a um, uh, there is a large area of warm, fuzzy feelings you can draw on, which seem like truth. And so his intentions may be good, you know, because that's kind of what I was doing. I was like, well, I want to be inclusive. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say these harsh phrases because you never know what's going to offend someone. And, you know, I did that for like a really long time. Um, and it wasn't until 2020 when I was like, no, I mean, they're, there have in these warm fuzzy feelings there's a lot of really dangerous things there's a lot of really really dangerous truths that on the surface seem fairly innocuous you know it's not a huge deal but when you start getting into like what they represent and what they stand for and then speaking of what we were talking about at the beginning the spirit behind the thing because now more you know and i won't talk forever about this but now especially in the field I work in, there's these phrases and these ways of saying things that you just, the spirit behind it's just not good. I can't name it. You know, I can't name necessarily what it is about using some phrases and some words. And I'm not trying to be too specific because I don't really want to get into it right now, but there's these well-meaning phrases that are kind of got some pop psychology wrapped up in them and some kind of like shame-free lifestyle, blah, 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 which really on the surface do seem like they're there to help they're there to help someone but there's not a lot of truth to them or there's not a lot of like divine truth to it it's just it's some real worldly you know stuff that's meant to set you kind of back and keep you in a state of kind of like being constantly being it's you accepting your um your we talked about this one time, breaking you down and leaving you broken down, like leaving you in a puddle. And, you know, the, it's just a spirit behind it. And I, I, I certainly espouse some of that. And that was part of the problem with Mr. Peterson now is, is that he's espousing some things that may be well-intentioned, but, you know, a path to hell, you know, so. Well, he's, I, I think that the, there's this very re there's this relativistic aspect to it and it was even in the just the little clip that we watched there of him with sam harris right where sam harris said um you know the god who cares if you're masturbating and he said well it depends on what it's taking you away from doing right and it's like ooh, that's very rel that's very relativistic because it's like well if it's taking you away from uh, watching another jordan peterson video then that's wrong yeah. Right. Because watching a Jordan Peterson video is better than masturbating. And it's like, well, why? Why? Yeah. Why? Well, I mean, this gets into the whole thing, too, of like, um, you know, just 
Jordan Peterson does not have the epistemology of the epistemology of the church. There's no world. I mean, the canons will. The can we have canons that say if you if you self abuse, well, you know, forty days penance. Like like we have canons that like speak to these things, and they're not arbitrary, and and they speak to these things because the body. <laughs> The body is the temple, and this temple is is it belongs to to someone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like that. That's I'm I'm trying. To, I have to reduce it down right now because that place where so many people are needing to repent of that place where it's like I don't want to look like that dumb guy. Yeah, totally. I don't want to look like that dumb guy. I don't want to look like a fundamentalist. That's the trap. Mm -hmm. you know i i want like i don't you know or i don't want my i don't want to be a part of something that looks like this that i believe in like you know those great memes with the caveman and the and the jedi you know what i mean mm -hmm. like god is a man in the sky god is a man in the sky and then like the guy in between like well actually it's a metaphor and you know really uh, uh like that's that that's the thing and and the otherworldly not just the aspect but the the otherworldly revelation of our faith it's like once you've tasted it you're like that's listen that's why people need to read the prologue every day you just if you don't know what to do, read, say the creed every morning, read the prologue every day. If you do that with some consistency, I guarantee you, you know, you'll you'll start receiving grace because you read that every day, you're like, okay, these people had limbs cut off. <laughs> you know what I mean? These people had breasts severed and eyes gouged out, and hot pokers put in their ears and watched their children, their loved ones die. Like. You don't do that for a metaphor. You don't do that for, you know, some sort of like poetic mythological meaning. You don't, you don't. Or political. Or political. You, like you don't do that. That's, that's the thing. That's, that's the reality, you know? And I guess that's why here at the end of the creed and and we'll see what god has for us next but that's really why the, the project was started and that's why we've been doing it is because you know the world path is where we encounter the living god and his kingdom which is inhabited by angels and saints and his holy mother and they exist and you can have contact with them yeah you yeah. can you can in fact i'll go so far as say if you're not that's the problem and like let's work on that right the the norm should be you're having contact with them not 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 the kind of like other end you know what i mean uh, i think this is this is the, that's the most difficult part i think for western christians is that there's a there's a big like there is there is a you know, I mean, th there are plenty of people, even ministers, right, of Protestant ministers who will be like, you don't want to experience the mystical. Like, you don't want that. You don't want that in your life. You shouldn't ask for that. You shouldn't have it. Maybe it's because they, 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 they can't deal with prelates if it comes. So mm -hmm. they just want to leave everybody away from that because they have no tradition to deal with prelates. I don't know what the reason is, but like, I have heard it just over and over and over again that like the idea that the mystical is something historical, mm -hmm. like that's something that happened in biblical times, mm -hmm. right? In the Bible times, that's when mystical stuff happened. It doesn't happen anymore. We don't have those kind of connections anymore. We're separated from it. We just kind of like pray and like maybe something will happen if we're good, you know, through, through our, through our works or through grace or whatever. Um, and it's the, it's, then something has to fill the gap 
Right. And then you're well, going to get good some weird god like Jordan Peterson is trying to give. Well, you. the thing is, you know, like we had catechism or uh, starting up catechism. Yes, last night was the first night, and like I start off catechism before I get into the creed, you know, talking about the two roads of tradition and dogma, and and getting to this place where it's like, you know, understanding that part of the problem is how people define mystical, right? Because there's, you know, I, I took, I take this from um, Father Stephen Freeman, but you know, there's like people living in this two story universe. Mm -hmm. God is, God is in the attic, you know, and every once in a while, you know, bump, bump, bump. Is that you God? Like, you know, like, Ooh, what, what's going on up there? You know? And that's, that's not, not only it, not only is that not how we see it, that's just not reality. Reality is that God is in the world with us. He permeates it. You know what I mean? And this is this is something that uh, let me just drop this on on some people. Uh, the reason why you don't see the spiritual realm, it's you know the garments of flesh, uh, and, and and really the kind of the the dulling of your noetic vision is a mercy. Mm -hmm. You couldn't handle it. You couldn't handle it. That's why the further people progress in the spiritual life, what that means is they've entered into an, you know, an increasing state of purification. That, that purification, if you will, think of it almost like their, their body, their being becoming more and more translucent. And it's not so much about you know, the light within being visible, but the light that we're all immersed in is able to to permeate their being if you're following me right it's 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 coming in and that purification and that ability like the reason why the saints begin to see the angels and see the saints and and, and see them as they are not it, it's it's not like they're coming to them in, in particular I, they're just able to see what's happening because that's the world that we live in you know what i mean that that's the thing our noetic vision is dulled because we of, of our sin. We can't handle it. It's a mercy. It's well, a mercy. I mean, you see, I don't know. You see people do it all the time. I mean, I, I don't see anything, but like I see people, it's like there's a constant distraction. Like, you know, people are constantly needing to distract themselves. Because You know, I mean, it was like that, that godless communist or whatever that went up into space the cosmonaut or whatever he's like oh, i didn't see god up there mm -hmm. and the priest is like well because you didn't see him down here i mean like, <laughs> I, don't, right. I don't i don't know what you want me to tell you <laughs> that's right yeah well but the the things that people as i watched this distraction happen it's interesting to me that the substitution right so like i imagine something like the metaverse and it's like which seems to me to be the eschaton of the prince of this world Right, like that the the vision of the metaverse is the the eschatological vision of Luciferianism, mm -hmm. right? And it's it seems to be the desire. What I see from so many people is this desire for the experience of the eternal and mystical kingdom. But they don't want to repent. But they don't want to repent. That's right. They they so so they want like the junk food version of right. it. Right. And like people, not the fullness. They just wanted like, oh, maybe just like trick me, fool me. Right. right? Put me back in the matrix, basically. Right. It I actually people, I you know, it's not gonna shock anyone, but people accept some pretty whack stuff just because they don't want to repent. And like because repent, like I guess repentance is seen, and it, I guess it can be at times. So it's like the thing. I see it a lot with people I work with at my work. It's like the one thing everybody's trying to avoid. It's like they're willing to accept some stuff like that. They're just as long as they don't have to go down that road that you have to go down. You know, if you want to encounter God in his realness, in who he is, because, you know, I, I see it a lot where I'm talking to someone and I'm kind of starting to get to the point where maybe I can be like, well, I mean, that's when you really need to start changing your mind. 
and then they'll pull a, a me and my early recovery or whatever, or a, and I, I, I just go, yeah, stop talking about this guy, but they'll pull a Peterson and they'll like, they'll find something else to focus on. They'll like find some other thing to focus on. And it's like, okay, yeah, I get it. Like, I get it. Sure. But you're really hyper obsessing about this thing. And you just took like one step on this road and immediately you've like pulled over to like at a gas station or whatever, because you just couldn't, you know, you just need a break or whatever. And I, I mean, it, it's just so it's like the one thing people in the world, I suppose, I, it seems like it's the one thing that no one's really willing to do right now. And it's being reflected in the culture. It's being reflected in like, I mean, certainly in my field um, of working with people in recovery, it's just like, well, that's not really necessary. It's not really necessary. And you should be able to find a way to lead a self-fulfilling life while feeling like you're the boss, you're in charge, you know, you can handle it. You can do this, you know. And you and, know what's crazy about that? No one tells them, but that's terrible. Like, <laughs> like the world in which you are the absolute authority and like, so the world in which you are the absolute authority, the world in which you're the boss in that, in that sense that it's being presented to people, it's hellish. Oh, it's hellish. It, you know, it's, it's one of those sense. things where uh, I've had a recent situation where God's blessed me. I'm really thankful actually. Um, where I've just been, you know, uh, I've been, I've, I've been tasked to be long suffering with someone and, and their, their big thing is like, you know, uh, getting back to the thing about like truth, you know, and if you hold to truth, you're arrogant, right? So it's, I've been dealing with this thing, like, you're so arrogant, blah, 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 which I am. Okay. That's fine. Like I can genuinely accept that. But the thing that, that if I could impress to this person, if they could even understand it is that the responsibility you bear, like the weight of responsibility for others, the weight of responsibility for yourself, um, the weight of responsibility to God, this is why people won't repent. Mm. This is why people won't repent. This, this is why, this is why, this is what so many men are tempted with. And, and this temptation is so strong. It's why so many men, you know, it isn't just in quote unquote black neighborhoods where there's a, an epidemic of fatherlessness. It's growing. It's a growing reality where, you know, more and more fathers may be quote unquote in the home, but they're checked out. They're not there because, it, because it's a burden. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. But they're because, there, but. Yeah. yeah. It, it, which gets us back to church they may, yeah, as well, they may as well not be there yeah yeah Actually. just like just like i was saying you're like okay you're in church whatever you know what i mean like i can't remember for, god forgive me I, I can't remember what what uh saint it was but basically um he was you know in church with peter the great and you know after the the service he he says to to the Peter the Gray is like, oh, where were you, Peter Ivanovich, or whatever? He's like, oh, I was in church, you know. He's a bishop. I can't remember. Forgive me, his name. He's like, no, you weren't. You were on the hill, you know, thinking about your next hunting lodge. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's what that's what we're talking about. And that's the that's see, this is the thing. This is what Peterson, and everyone can't wrap. It's it's not that they can't. They don't want to wrap their their mind around it. Is that what we are talking about right now, when we say show up on Sunday, be present in prayer, you get distracted, bring your, bring your noose back. You're, you're running off somewhere else. You're thinking about, you know, chocolate ice cream, you know, the going to see Thor tonight, you know, having ribs, bring your, bring your mind back. It happens, right? But bring your mind back because that's the thing. When you bring it back, you're taking that responsibility. You and show up at home. Sorry. Huh? And say you're sorry. Yeah, you show up at home, right? St. Paisios, he says, listen, it's good for a husband. If he's struggling, being present, like take 15 minutes, take a half hour before you go home. Sit at a bench, get yourself together, but then go home because it's better to be late and be present than be on time for dinner or whatever and you're not there. Like you won't experience the kingdom which in this context 
being present with your wife and your children, truly, you won't experience it unless you take this cross up, unless you bear this burden, which makes you tangible. By you picking up your cross, see, Peterson's whole thing with the cross, which people ate up, that's just self-help guru stuff, man. That's just self-help exactly. guru stuff, whatever, exactly. right? Because at the end, like, you do this and you're a better person. Look, man, <laughs> no, you pick up your cross because it's what's going to make you real. Because the reality is that you will, you will begin to, you find your reality, you become real when you are broken and poured out for others. Mm -hmm. Full stop, period. That's mm -hmm. it. The second you want to turn it into like, I want to be bigger, stronger, faster, better, smarter, you're becoming hollow, man. Like that's not, that's not it. And so these things of being present and, and, and taking these things up, this is, this is the secret that nobody, nobody wants to hear because there's a burden for these things. There's a burden for all the truth that we have been with God's blessing and help to try to mine and uncover and get at after the, you know, all these episodes, what's it about? Like, it's not about us. It, it, it's about, we're trying to apprehend God in a way that is, you know, not relevant, you know what I mean? Not subjective, but absolute, if you understand what I'm saying. And, and the only way to do that is repentance. It's, it's like, the burden of you being the shot caller and you being absolutely right. That's why the whole accusation about arrogance, you, the only people, who, <laughs> once you realize that that's what the spiritual life is about, it, it's, it's, it is fear and trembling. Mm. It is, you, you did that, that verse about working your salvation out of fear and trembling, you begin to really taste the truth of what that means because it's it's it is a real crucifixion of self that that is absolutely required of you to to even begin to see the things we're talking about now to see what the creed is saying to experience this life of the kingdom like it's it's the only there is no other way which is why again anything that that tries to make it metaphor it that's why that's why we're harping on it so hard because it's just enough there just enough to make you feel like, okay, I'm there at the door, but it's just enough off to not get you in the door, if you understand what I'm saying. Like, it isn't self-help. So I think if we can understand that responsibility that is laid at us when we really look at the things of the church and, and, and the creed and really pull them close to ourselves and, and really guard them properly, you know what I mean? What I mean by guarding them, I mean keeping our attention fixed on them, understanding them, not, not holding them loosely in such a way that someone can kind of come in and be like, well, does it really mean this? Is it really this, this, and that? You know what I mean? Because these are these, this is a key into this is the key into the kingdom in which you you don't you're not just getting doctrinal, you know, uh, statements correct, but you're actually finding the the legend to the map, right? If you know that context of like the legend to the map by which you're going to find God. One of the, my elevator pitches for when I first start counseling with a person is, and I only counsel men, I find that men tend to respond pretty well to this, is um, I, I tell people, I don't really sell people on recovery as being happy, joyous, and free. Like that's not the selling points. Those mm -hmm. can be like, byproducts of a good program like mm -hmm. but the minute that those become the goal you've lost it like mm -hmm. that's when things start going bad um and then a good I, I mean i say like life is brutal like life is absolutely brutal and you know anybody you know to quote princess bride but you know anybody that tells you differently is either lying or trying to sell you something like and um it actually broke the other way with a dude who said like he's like you know how you told me that you're never happy right and i was like ah, i never said that i like never once said that i never said i'm never happy i never said that like life is just suffering i'm not a buddhist like there's more to life besides suffering 
suffering is just the greatest catalyst to growth. It's, it's the greatest catalyst to becoming closer to the one who suffers to Christ. You know, the one who's not afraid to suffer the one who crucifies the one who is crucified. Like there's, there's nothing wrong. Like, you know, I just don't want you to see suffering as something negative because so much of the self-help garbage is if you're not living your, your best all the time, you're doing something wrong, you know? And so that's, uh, that's my, that's my take on that. So anyway, Cyprian, you got something? Well, I mean, just on the note of, just on the note of self-help and I, I mean, I think, I think you guys nailed it, but I mean, the, the difference between self-help and this idea of like, you know, I think Peterson's pick up your cross and carry it. And it's being a very self-help sort of thing is that it's like sort of in, in all of his, and he, I think he even says it sometimes, like you can pick your cross. He'll say that, Mm -hmm. you know, like you can pick the cross that you, and I'm like, Mm -mm. I think now, and I'm like, wait, actually it's never been that Mm -hmm. it's always like, this is the cross that is presented to you. And it's always like, uh, are you serious? Like, really, this is what I'm going to do. And, but you, uh, yet you always know, like, this is exactly what I have to do. Like, uh, I, I, you know what I, mean? <laughs> I hate headaches. I would almost take any other pain in my body, backache, lower back, knees, you know, elbow, but I have a shoulder thing. And it commonly results in me getting just like, the grossest nausea inducing headaches. I hate headaches. I would take any other pain. I sometimes have like Charlie horses. You should pray the Saint I'll, Silla one. What's that? You should pray the Saint Silla one. Oh yeah, duh. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So <laughs> so that and that's funny because I've actually known that about Saint Silla one. And I know that he mentioned something about like I know that the headaches was a big part of his, but I, I even sometimes have like Charlie horses in my legs and I'd be like, I would even take like a low level Charlie horse all the time that I have to deal with. Like just as long as it's not a headache, but I, I have really bad headaches a lot. And it's like, um, and it's a shoulder thing. And like, because I tense up a lot, you know, it's just, it's all oh, it's like it's a, your cross. Are you getting at your cross? That that's what I'm getting at. I'm getting at that. That was the cross that was chosen for me. Is, is this like, and I prayed to have it taken away and it wasn't. So it's a cross. It's something I just have to bear. And it's like, I've tried most things to help it go away. And there's some stuff that helps, but yeah. Well, I've said it before and it is what it is, but that's how I know Christ is. And it's one of the many ways, but it's a sure way. I know Christ is in my life because I have a bunch of crosses. I would never have chosen. I just wouldn't have, right? And so when someone says you can pick your cross, I'm like, man, I'm scooting over five feet from that cat because lightning is <laughs> going to strike like that. You don't pick your cross. You take the cross that's given to you, you know? And, and that's the evidence of Christ in your life. Look at the crosses in your life, right? Mm-hmm. That's how you know that, that this, isn't, this isn't a simulation. This isn't the secret. It isn't choose your own adventure. Right. There's a master that you must <laughs> you must bow your knee to. And with his help, perhaps one day you rise as a son. But this is this is this is the thing. It's the cross, the weapon of peace. So that being said, this is my last show for the next two weeks. So I'm gonna ask you guys a nerdy question because it's my last show for the next two weeks and I don't really have anything prepared for a saint. So I'm going to ask you guys, because generally people have, this gives some insight into the person. If you were to play a role playing game, what class would you choose? Like, what do you guys normally pick? Thief. Thief Thief or rogue. Thief or rogue is always me. Yeah. Me too. I like the sneaky like fast yeah. dudes that uh like my friend uh nathan catechumen nathan's a really big guy he always chooses 
the big bards, like the uh, not bards, like the big barbarians, like warriors, stuff like that. His favorite X Men is Colossus, you know, like in mine's Nightcrawler. So what does that say? Like Nightcrawler's like a sneaky little rogue. And there you go. And I said Gambit. You know what I mean? You're, you're for <laughs> sure Gambit, Mon Cherie. <laughs> Mon Cherie. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For what sure, about sure. you, Father? What oh, kind of class are you? Cleric. Cleric. A oh, natch. Natch. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That's yeah, I mean, even even before being whatever, I always played, you know, I love playing clerics. So. Why is a cleric more appealing than a wizard? I've always wondered about it because I've never liked in role playing games, I've never cared for the magical characters. I've never either. wanted to be a magical character. Why is so, a cleric more appealing than a wizard? So, what I always loved about the cleric is the same thing I love about, like, you know, when I was tattooing, uh, it's like, this is this is crazy for people. It's like, and I got this place where I was usually in a sweet spot, but there's a thing that's like, do whatever you want. I don't care. It's like, ah, ah, gosh, no. Like, give me some sort of parameter, something, right? Because and I don't know. I keep. I always. I always talk about this, and I don't know. I, I don't know what the phenomenon is called, but there's this thing that happens with with creative people and creation. It's like creativity flourishes better under parameters and, and, mm -hmm. you know, um, a deadline, a like, deadline, you know, musicians will often have, they'll do better with a producer, right? Mm -hmm. Someone who's writing will do better with an editor. You know what I mean? Um, an artist will do better with, with some sort of parameter, like, okay, you want me to do a series, but based on what, you know what I mean? Like some limits, some sort of limits some sort of limits right and there's this paradox there the cleric has these limits on mm. on what is possible and and to me i always love that because it, it forces you to actually become more creative to become more resourceful in some regards right it, it, it's just enough limit to then spur on a greater like expansion of your of your creativity and potential so yeah and then this the yeah anyways well and a cleric and a cleric is is um i mean a cleric in those is kind of like a navy corpsman for marines right is that it's like you really it only takes one adventure out there where somebody's on the verge of death and the cleric like just heals them and you guys walk yeah. out you only need one of those times to be like this is the most most important person here by the way just the way yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> like, i thought that was the gonna most be important person on the team <laughs> yeah, yeah. i thought that was gonna be your answer father was wizards don't heal like like mages don't heal like clerics heal you know like at least the games i played wizards are almost mm -hmm. always offensive offensive yeah yeah, but clerics have offensive clerics oh, can do. go on the offense for sure. But I'm saying, like, yeah, you're healing people, but you've also got this big axe or hammer that you're like flying mace. around the people. Mace, yeah. yeah, mace. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it can, the cleric generally can't use a bladed weapon, yeah, no right? Bladed a sharp weapons, weapon. Blunt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a staff, a mace. What kind of what kind of race would you be? Because I'm always what kind of race i'm always a dark elf always always, always. oh i always love a dark elf yeah i'm you know i'm almost always a human the drow. really I like, being a, I like being a human thief hmm. or rogue not thief not thief so much rogue but like uh rogue is always yeah what's is, is there a difference between there the is a thief the, and a rogue but i feel yeah. like rogue is always what i chose rogue tends to deal more with assassination like poisoning there, and stuff yes. like that yeah that's yes. more of a sneak, rogue. sneak attacks Mm -hmm. like that type of thing rather than actually going and like like serendipitously stealing goods and then running out without attacking anybody no i want to attack you oh yeah but i'm just gonna i'm gonna like sneak around to you you won't see me and then wow you know yeah. kill shot like that's what I mean. <laughs> I mean the thing about the dark elf rogue though is that you get those inherent like those racial traits that are pretty beneficial right. i don't remember what they are off the top of my head I, I know night vision is one of them. Night vision, that was what I was about to say, yeah. It seems like good luck trying to find a species that doesn't have an enhanced night vision, except for human. I think most other have enhanced night vision. So I'm just, I don't know, just most of them live in caves and stuff like that, or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. according to lore, have spectacular eyes. Um, so with that being said, uh, 
I mentioned it, but I'll say it one more time. I'm out for the next two weeks uh, on off air. I'm going to make sure that who I think is this guest host will be the guest host. Um, and then we have that merch. Um, I hope that's going well. I have not checked. I have not uploaded any of that music to the playlist. I'm very, very sorry. I haven't gone Royal back. Royalpath.store, by the way, for people. Royal... It's in the description, but Royalpath.store. Thank yeah, you. And whoever's making the stuff, whoever's dropping the stuff off in my office, Man, God bless you. It's the, the mug was great and the, and the little decal thing and just very creative. So I don't I I legitimately I thought I knew who you were, but I don't. So thanks. if it's the same person, it's probably the same my, person who made the baby tea for you. The, yeah, yeah, for my shirts for my kids. Again, I thought I knew who it was. It wasn't that person. So whoever you are, you're you're good. Whoever you are, you're good. You're you're, good. you're, you're killing it. You worry me because I don't know who you are. I don't like. I kind of don't like that. So. <laughs> hey, maybe it's They'll better. Eventually, we don't be re are. revealed. They'll be revealed at some point for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, everyone. Uh, please keep me and my wife Markella in prayer. And uh, I'm born baby Matrona. Um, so just keep us in prayer, and I will see you guys in three weeks. And hey, for the next three weeks. Thanks for having a good night. Bye-bye.